Hello, it's me, and I'm going to do uh, some more viewer questions. Uh, this one is from uh, Megamorphinx, and uh, this is entitled Megamorphinx Parody. This comes from Rama Vinukanda, and uh, he says, uh, Hi, could you please explain me the procedure to solve this parody of this cube? Uh, so, uh, as you can see, he's so close, so close to finishing, except he's got two corners that apparently need to be swapped. Everything else looks okay, but... Um, but as you can see, uh, there's there's two corners here. Just kind of put it in the same position that he has over here. Uh, so you can see that my coloring scheme is it was actually the same, but uh, he has a stickerless version. I've got a stickered version. So how did this happen? Well, um, don't worry. Uh, you're not the only one to have done an entire solve only to find that two pieces are off. Um, and like the time that that happened to me, the best way to prevent a situation like this, believe it or not, is to, before you finish the uh, edge reduction and finish the solve, is to actually place the corners to make sure that you have the proper center reduction. See, where this comes from is it's actually not a parity of corners. Uh, so when you're in a situation like this, the first thing you want to do is you want to stop and sort of think to yourself how this could have happened and why this should have happened. Well, first off, you don't really get corner parity. You don't get parities of corners because you don't reduce corners. If you don't reduce corners, then they're going to act the same way, whether it's an odd layer or an even layer. Parity problems occur when you're reducing from an odd, from an even layer to an odd layer, like a 4x4 four four to a 3x3. Three three. And of course, it's natural to think that since this is really a 4x4 four four kind of a puzzle, that it must be a parity, but it's actually not. So what is the underlying problem with this? Well, unfortunately, we have to go through a couple of steps if you didn't want to just do kind of like a re-scramble of it in order to get this back, the best way to prevent this is to, after you reduce all the centers, put the corners in and see if they make sense. If they don't make sense, then it means that you've reduced the, corner, the centers wrong. And it's not a parity that you had, it's a false equivocation. Because what I'm going to show is that the actual problem with this puzzle is not a parity of corners, because you don't get parity of corners. It actually isn't what I would even call a parity at all, it's a false equivocation. What I enjoy about the Megamorphinx puzzle is you have every kind of possible pitfalls that you can have. You do get parity with this, a normal 4x4 parity. You also get a perspective bending um, when you're trying to uh, place these edges as you would with any uh, uh, Master Pyromorphinx or just a Megamorphinx. But you also get false equivocation of centers because th the center piece is here, like this one, is this has translational equivalence to this one. So this and this and this, these are all centers of different sides, but they can be replaced with each other. And that's what happens. So believe it or not, just swapping these two will prevent this swap from happening. So with that said, how do we get out of this? Well, we first recognize that corners are not the parity. So let's just place the corners. Let's ignore everything else. We'll just have to sort of sequentially get it solved back, but let's just place the corners where, where they're supposed to be. I can just hold it like, um, say, this, and just start wheeling these around until we get them back. So you can use any technique uh, of your choice. So I'm gonna do the algorithm that keeps this where it is and rotates these around until I have two that are next to each other. So either um, this one and this one, or this one and this one. And that algorithm, as you recall, so if this is my front face, I'm gonna keep one of the ones that are in that I don't wanna, that I don't wanna rotate around to my right, and I'm gonna do a corner rotating algorithm, which you must know because you got, well, this far. And it's gonna be U R U I L I U R I U I L. Okay, so you see that this corner is in and this corner is in. We have just to swap these two. To which case you might be saying, well, I'm no better than I started. I still have two that I need to swap. Well, just go ahead and do a corner swap. Don't worry about anything else. So the corner swap is going to be 2R U, 2R UI, 2R UI D, 2R UI. 2R, U, 2R, and this is moved back. So, lo and behold, this is in, this is in, this is in, and this is in. Now, this is upside down, this is rotated. 
So let's go ahead and just get this back. Now don't worry about what's happening here. We've got to deal with that in a bit. But let's rotate this. Now you might think, well, wait a minute. This, this, and this are rotated correctly, and this is not. Well, this is another fun thing about the master pyromorphics and the megamorphics puzzles, is you have rotational equivalents with these corners. Because you have rotational equivalents, this is rotated, and any one of these two is rotated as well. So that's why it would appear to be a parity of rotation, but it's actually not. Uh, that's if everything was in except for one corner is rotated. So I've got various tutorials of this kind of puzzle that shows that. So I'm just going to fix it by doing my R I D I R D R I D I R D. Uh, is it fixed? Yeah, it's fixed. Ignore this, but you can see this is uh, the right color here: yellow, red, and blue. But we've messed everything else up. So what we have to do is let's just move another corner in position and do R I D I R D, which rotates this and gets all of these back. And because this has rotational equivalents, it doesn't matter how many times you do that. So this was a hidden wrong rotation. R I D I R D, R I D I R D, and again, R D. It should be once more and done. Okay. So, so basically what, what I did is I just put the corners in and then I just rotated them back and now this is bringing out the actual destructive process that happened uh, with this. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to get, let's, let's just get the edges back in. So this is in and this is in. These two need to be swapped. In that way, that's, that's really a parity. It's kind of like a parity. Well, I guess it is a parity. To swap these, normally I would do a URF algorithm where I split it down here and go to U, to R, to F, to U, to U, but I'm not going to do that because if I did that, these two would swap, but this center would also rotate, and we don't want to do that. So what you need to do is you need to do one of the most longest and obnoxious of algorithms that I have to standardly use, which is a variation of the URF algorithm that swaps these two, but does not change the rotation of this center. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start off with a middle U move here, and that's going to be a UI. So that's a UI. Then we do an R and an FI, so we still have the URF. And then the top U. U, R, I, F. Then we do a middle U, and we do a D from the middle. D. And then finish it up with a F, I, R, U, I. Then F, R, I, and then finish it up again with a middle di. And lo and behold, you will swap these two, you will not change rotation, and you will see the true problem that was always there. This center is rotated 90 degrees off. Corners are in, edges are in, this is rotated 90 degrees off. How did that happen? Well, that happened because one of these centers has to be swapped with one of these centers, one of these center pieces. So you put the wrong center piece in the wrong center, but you would have no way of knowing that um, just by reducing it because it looks just fine. You would have no way of knowing that you actually created the center 90 degrees off, and that's an impossibility. It's beyond parity. It's actually false equivocation. So what we need to do is we need to re-reduce our centers, but here's the good news, it's not going to affect any of these. The centers are, it's almost like a separate puzzle when you're doing the centers of a 4x4. Four four. Um, so what we need to do is this needs to go here, and this needs to go here. I can't cleanly swap that without affecting these guys. Now I could cleanly swap it if I put the centers in and then made sure that the corners made sense, but I can't do that now because I'll waste all of my good work over here. Okay, so let's think about what, what we need to do. I need to get this to here. I need to swap these two. So I'm going to pick a center um, that's equivalent to that, which is going to be, well, it could be this one or it could be this one. Um, but this needs to come here and this needs to come here. So what I'll do is I'm just going to move this into a position up here so that this 
can participate in that swap. Now, I'm not really swapping this. This will come here, so you won't notice any difference. This will come here, and this will come here. So it'll look like they swapped, but it was really just a three cycle. So put this in a position where this can exchange with this center over here, and we're gonna do this um, swapping algorithm, which you probably know because you got this far. And that's gonna be li u r u i l u r i and this goes back so you can see this is where it needs to be might as well turn this back over here so these two sort of swapped this is where it needs to be over here now what i need to do is these guys need to swap as well but actually these two kind of need to swap so what we're going to do is we need to shuttle this around with one of these guys here so i would say why don't we take this and swap these two using one of this, using this color over here, because that way I can end up doing a clean swap with this. So I'm gonna take this, this needs to come to here, this and this will come to here, then I'll swap these two. So let's move this into a configuration over here. I'm gonna, well, let's do it like this. This will come here. This will come here and this will come here. So this will be where it needs to be over here. So it's going to be R U I L I U R I U I L. Okay, so you can see these two are now where they need to be. Uh, I just need to now three cycle this down to here. So we're just gonna collect our bearings here. If I move this down like so, this will come here where it needs to be, this will come down here where it needs to be, and this will come over here, and it should be done. So we're gonna do li, ui, r, u, l, U I R. So you don't have to memorize any difference there. We're just sort of swapping algorithms. And then we simply move this back. This has now been placed where it needs to be. Put this over here and it's done. Now that last part, I think you can probably figure it out. That's probably not where you had uh, the biggest trouble because you did manage to reduce your center. So you must have known the proper algorithms to go from one center to the next. I was just um, um, kind of showing you how to do that without messing anything else up. So there you have it, that should get it back in. But again, the best way to avoid this is to prevent this from happening, preventative medicine, so to speak, that after you've reduced your centers, before doing your edge reduction, go ahead and put the corners in just to see if the centers don't have anyone that's 90 degrees off. If it is, then you've got to swap out one equivalent center for another. And that's how you do it. Anyway, thanks for watching.